Good day everyone, I am Cesar Gikok, uh, the first reporter from Group 1 and me and my group mates will discuss about data analysis, interpretations, and presentation. So, so first and foremost, let us define our objectives for this topic. Number one, we have discussed the difference between qualitative and quantitative data and analysis. Number two, enables you to analyze data gathered form, such as questionnaires, interviews, and observation studies. Number three is make you aware of software packages that are available to help your analysis. Number four is identify common pitfalls in data analysis, interpretation, and presentation. And lastly, uh, enables you to interpret and present your findings in appropriate ways. So next, I'm going to tackle about the definition and importance of qualitative and quantitative data analysis. So first, we have quantitative data. So quantitative data express as numbers. It is made up of numbers or data that can be quickly transformed into numbers. Examples include the interviewer's years of experience, uh, the number of active projects in a certain department, or the uh, time required to do a task. Next is we have qualitative data. It is difficult to measure sensitively as numbers. For example, count numbers of words to measure this dissatisfaction. Examples of qualitative data that are presented as words and images include descriptions, quotes from interview subjects, activity vignettes, and photographs. Although it is possible, presenting qualitative data in numerical form is not always helpful. It is a common misconception that some data collection techniques can only produce quantitative data, while other techniques can only generate qualitative data. But this is fallacy. Both qualitative and quantitative information can be gathered using any of the techniques that discussed in the previous chapters. Okay, next we have um, numerical methods to a certain size, magnitude, and amount. In quantitative analysis, numerical techniques are used to determine the size, quantity, or size of something, such as the characteristics, actions, or intensity of the participant's opinions. For instance, a quantitative analysis of a population might find that the average adult is 45 years old, 5 feet, 11 inches tall, and weighs 180 pounds. Lastly, uh, in qualitative analysis, some things nature can be illustrated through themes, patterns, and stories. An analysis of the same group's qualitative data, for instance, may reveal that the typical member is tall, thin, and middle-aged. For my final discussion, uh, this is all about quantitative analysis. Average and percentage are fairly well-known numerical measures. However, there are three different types of average and using the wrong one can lead to the misinterpretation of the result. These three are mean, median, and mode. Mean refers to the commonly understood interpretation of average. That is, add together all the figures and divide by the number of figures with which you started. Median and mode, average, are less well known but are very useful. The median is the middle value of the data when the numbers are ranked. The mode is the most commonly occurring number. For example, in a set of data such as 2, 3, 4, Six six seven 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 eight. The median is six and the mode is seven. While the mean is fifty over nine or equals to five point fifty six. In this case, the difference between average is not that great. So to sum up, mean 
uh, it add up values and divide by number of data points. Median is the middle value of the data when ranked. And the mode uh, figure that appears most often in the data. We can also use graphical representation that can give overview of the data such as line graphs, bar graphs, frequency tables, circle graphs, pie graphs, etc. Good day everyone, I am Alessandra Marie C. Coronel and I will start my discussion by the question, how does question design affects data analysis? Question design affects data analysis. Designing a questionnaire means creating a valid and reliable questions that address your research objectives, placing them in a useful order, and selecting, selecting an appropriate method for administration. Uh, there is closed-ended question and open-ended questions. Closed questions are, is analyzed quantitatively. Closed-ended or restricted choice questions offer respondents a fixed set of choices to select from. Uh, Close-ended questions are best for collecting data that on categorical or quantitative variables. Uh, open question, each answer analyzed separate, separately. Open-ended questions allow respondents to give answers in their own words because there are no restrictions restrictions on their choices. Respondents can answer in ways that researchers may not have considered otherwise. Uh, often, open-ended questions have few downsides. They require more time and effort from response respondents, which may deter them from completing the questionnaire. For researchers, understanding and summarizing responses to these questions can take a lot of time and resources. Uh, fixed alternative answers restricts what can be said in the findings. Well designed, close-ended questions are easy to understand and can be answered quickly. However, uh, you might still miss important answers that are relevant to the respondents. An incomplete set of response items may force some respondents to pick the closest alternative to their true answer. This type of answers, this type of questions may also miss out on valuable detail. Uh, fi uh, fixed alternative answers limits your responses, while open-ended questions enable a broad range of answers. Basic quantitative analysis. Three basic approaches to qualitative analysis are discussed in this section are identifying themes, categorizing data, and analyzing critical incidents. Looking for critical incidents helps to focus on key events, then analysis can proceed using specific techniques. Critical incident analysis is a way to isolate subsets of data for more detailed analysis perhaps by identifying themes or applying categories. These three basic approaches are not mutually exclusive and are often used in combination. The critical incident technique is a system procedure for obtaining rich qualitative information about significant in incidents from observers with first-hand experience, which in return helps researchers understand the critical requirements for individuals processes or systems. Identifying themes. Emergent from data dependent on observation framework if used. Inductive analysis. Uh, thematic analysis is a method of analyzing qualitative data. It is usually applied to a set of texts such as an interview or transcripts. The researcher closely examines the data to identify common themes, such as topic, ideas, and patterns of meaning that come up repeatedly. Uh, next is categorizing data. Categorization scheme is pre-specified. Deductive analysis. 
Categorization is a major component of qualitative data analysis by which investigators attempt to group patterns observed in the data into meaningful units or categories. Through this process, categories are often created by chunking together groups of previously coded data. Identified and identifying teams or semantic analysis takes an inductive approach while categorizing data takes a deductive approach. In practice, analysis are often performed iteratively and it is common for teams to identify inductively then to, to be applied deductively to a new data and for an initial pre-existing categorization scheme to be enhanced inductively when applied to a new situation or data. Which kind of analytic framework to use? There are several different analytical frameworks that can be used to analyze and interpret data from a qualitative study. In this section, six different approaches are outlined, ordered roughly in terms of their granularity or their level of detail involved. These frameworks will be discussed by my groupmates, starting with conversation analysis, which will be tackled by John Roddick Rusit. Good day everyone, I'm John Roddick Rusit. Let's start. Conversation analysis. Examines the semantics of a conversation in fine detail. This technique is used in sociological studies and it examines how conversations start and how turn-taking structured together with other rules of conversation. It has been used to analyze interaction in a range of settings and it has influenced designers' understanding of users' needs in this environment. It can be also used to compare conversations that take place to different media. For example, face-to-face -face conversations versus those conducted through social media. More recently, it has been used to analyze the conversations that take place with voice-assisted technologies and chat groups. Discourse analysis. It focuses on dialogue, in other words, the meaning of what is said and how words are used to convey meaning. As being said by Coyle in 1995, discourse analysis is strongly interpreted, pays great attention to context, and this language not only as reflecting psychological and social aspects, but also as constructing them. An underlying assumption of discourse analysis is that there is no ob objective scientific truth. Language is a form of social reality that is open to interpretation from different perspectives. In this sense, the underlying philosophy of discourse analysis is similar to that of ethnography. Discourse analysis is useful when trying to identify subtle and implicit meaning in what people are writing about, what is trending, what is fake news, and so on. It can be used with data from interviews in social media such as Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp, even though in emails. And analysis typically involves classifying the data into teams or categories, and then studying the frequency of category references based on Friedendorf in 2013. The technique can be used for any text where text refers to a range of media, including video, newspapers, advertisements, service responses, images, sounds, and so on. It can be used to analyze any online content, including the text of tweets, links, animated GIF, videos, and images. Context analysis is often used in conjunction with other analysis techniques as well. Good day to everyone. I am Veronica Anpasqual and I will be discussing about interaction analysis, ground theory, and last but not the least is the illustration of an open coding. Interaction analysis is a way to investigate and understand interactions between people and between people and artifacts, meaning understanding the interactions of human beings with each other and objects in their environment. Instances of a salient event are assembled and played one after the other. The analysis is based on realistic observations such as videos. This procedure focuses on both talk and non-verbal interactions with artifacts and technologies 
And as we recall of what I have said, it is based on video recordings. A fundamental idea of this approach is that knowledge and action are fundamentally social. The goal is to derive generalizations from videos of naturally happening activities, focusing on how the people being observed make sense of each other's actions and their collective achievements. Inductive process in teams is collaborative. It is where the teams of researchers suggest statements about general patterns from multiple examples of empirical observations. Contents of the material is logged. This process includes suggesting the intentions, motivations, and understandings of the people who are being viewed in the videos. Materials are extracted, classified, or removed. The videos are then disassembled, as it is called, by extracting interesting materials, reclassifying some of them in terms of what they represent while removing the others. And then the team of researchers studies the assemblage together. Rounded theory. It seeks to develop theory from systematic analysis of empirical data. The development of a grounded theory advances, advances through alternating data collection and data analysis. First, data is collected and analyzed to identify ideas. Then that analysis may lead to further data collection and analysis to extend and, ref and refine the ideas and so on. There are three levels of coding and they are open, actual, and selective. Open coding, it identifies categories, properties, and dimensions. Actual coding is the process of systematically fleshing out categories and relating them to their subcategories. Selective coding is a form of theoretical scheme. It is the process of refining and integrating categories to form a larger theoretical scheme. The researchers are encouraged to draw on own theoretical backgrounds to inform analysis. The analytic tools to help stimulate a question the data, which can help an, ana an analyst to generate ideas or consider different ways of looking at the data. Analyze words, phrases, or sentence. Considering in detail the meaning of a statement can also help to produce different perspectives on the data. Comparisons between objects or abstract categories. It is important because comparing one with the other brings alternative interpretations. So let's move forward to illustration of open coding. The figure shows the illustration of preliminary open coding. Those words in small letters are identified by the researcher as potential codes. The observation is focused on gameplay, game mechanics, rewards, interactivity, progress rate, and game interface. The game is rated using an 11-point interactivity scale including 0, where 0 meant that play progressed without any interaction of the player, while 10 meant that the game progressed only slowly without player interaction. Progress through the levels of the game were also rated on the same scale. At the end of game session and observation, the researcher wrote a brief overview of the game and conducted preliminary open coding of the observation. Good afternoon everyone. My name is Desnil Sanderes and now let's continue. The analysis process that developed the incremental games super category, each category above is part of incremental games. Process started with open coding of observation on idle games. Multiple codes are created. Concepts are discovered through analyzing the open codes and identifying the common features. This is an iterative process where new codes are added, combined, or deleted. Each code is connected to one or more games and 
can be combined to form new concepts. Concepts are analyzed to find common relationships and thus categories emerge. In the diagram, coloration is only to is only to aid in reading. The left grouping is to show that all contained codes are part of click to manage and click to progress. And this pro this figure illustrates the open codes resulting concepts and categories developed for incremental games. This shows that four categories of incremental games emerge from this analysis, micromanagement, derivative, singular source, and multiplayer. System-based frameworks. For large projects where the researcher is interested in investigating how a new technology should be best be introduced and what its impact is afterward. It is necessary to analyze many sources of data collected over a long period of time, conducting analysis of small fragments of conversation or identifying themes for, from interviews may be useful for highlighting specific working practices, but understanding how a whole socio-technical -techno system, for example, uh, hospital, corporation, local, local council, or airport, works at scale requires a different kind of analytical framework. Analytical framework. Two such frameworks are introduced next. Understanding a whole socio-technical system requires different analytical framework. One is socio-technical system theory. Socio-technical system STS theory makes explicit the fact that the technology and the people in a work system are interdependent rather than trying to optimize either the technical system or the social system independently of each other. STS suggests that this interdependency can interdependency be recognized and the system be treated as a whole. As an approach and uh, sorry, number two is distributed cognition of teamwork. It is an approach of to studying the nature of cognitive phenomena across individuals, artifacts, and internal and external representations. Next. Tools to support data analysis. While it is possible to perform these kinds of data analysis using only manual techniques, most people would agree that it is quicker and easier and more accurate to use software software tool of some kind in the majority of cases and here are some examples of tools that will support data analysis spreadsheet uh, simple to use basic graphs next is statistical packages for example sas and spss statistical analysis software sas and statistical package Package for the Social Science SPSS are popular quantitative analysis packages that support the use of statistical tests. SPSS, for example, is a sophisticated package offering a wi wide range of statistical tests such as frequency distributions, rank cor correlations, to determine statistical significance. Regression analysis and cluster analysis, SPSS assumes that the user knows and understands statistical statistical analysis. Next is NVivo and Dedos. Two well-known tools that support some of these data analysis activities are NVivo and Dedos. For example, and Vivo supports the annotation and coding of data including PDF documents, photos, and video and audio files. Using NVivo, using NVivo, field notes can be searched for keywords or phrases to support coding or content anal analysis. Codes and data can be explored, merged, and manipulated 
in several ways. The information can also be printed in variety of forms, such as a list of every occasion, occasion a word or place is used in the data, and a tree structured showing the relationships among codes, like all software packages. And Vivo has advantages and disadvantages, but it is per but it is particularly powerful for handling large sets of data and can generate output for statistical packages. That's my part. Thank you. Good day, everyone. My name is Emily Alansalan. Interpreting and presenting the findings. Choosing an appropriate way to present the findings of a study is as important as choosing the right analytical approach. This choice will depend on the data gathering and analysis techniques used as well as the audience and the original goals of the study. In some situations, the details of the data collection and analysis will be needed. For example, when working with others to make sense of a large collection of data or when trying to convince an audience about a controversial conclusion. In other situations, only the salient trends, headlines, and overall implications are needed so the style of the presentation can be linear. In this figure, results representation style used in this scouts report about smartphone use. In the figure A, we can see a bubble diagram in which the size of the circle represents the number of uses. And in figure B, a timeline across the day of touches from an average, from an average user and a heavy user. Presenting findings. Structured notations have clear syntax and semantics to present particular viewpoint. Advantages of using a structured notation are that the meaning of different symbols is well defined, and so it provides clear guidance on what to look for in the data and what to highlight and what it enforces precision in expression. Disadvantages include that by highlighting specific elements, it inevitably de-emphasizes or ignores other aspects, and the precision expressed by the notation may be lost on an audience if they don't know the notation well. Stories are easy and intuitive approach to communicate ideas. Storytelling may be employed in three different ways. First, participants may have told stories of their own during data gathering. These stories can be extracted, can be compared, and may be used to communicate findings to others for example, to illustrate points. Second, stories based on observations such as ethnographic field studies may be employed for further data gathering. The scenarios were developed on the basis of ethnographic studies and previous co-design co -design activities and were presented through, story through storytelling to facilitate understanding. Third, stories may be constructed from smaller snippets or repeated episodes that are found in the data. In this case, stories provides a way of rationalizing and collate, collating data to form a representative account of a product used or, or a certain type of event. Summarize findings using a range of notations. Presentation style will usually be used in combination to produce a summary of the findings. For instance, a story may be expanded with graphical representations of activity or demographics. And data excerpts from transcripts or videos may be used to illustrate particular points. Careful interpretation and presentation of the study result is just as important as choosing the right analysis technique so that the findings are not overemphasized and and evidence is not misrepresented.